Hello guys and welcome to episode 2 of the how to make Valorant in Unity tutorial series. Now in today's episode we're going to be making our first weapon which is going to be the classic um, which is kind of the basic um, handgun in Valorant um, and yeah so with today's episode we're just going to be laying the basic groundwork of um, you know creating our weapon system we're not gonna like get into like having like a loadout system yet um, or like a shop system. We're just simply going to have our guns shooting and firing as of today. Um, so what I have here um, before we start is I actually have um, this thing called the low poly weapons pack. Um, now in it, there are a bunch of really nice looking guns um, that you can get for free on the asset store. I'll link this asset in the description below for all of you guys to go get. Um, but in case um, the link doesn't work for some reason, this is the name of the asset that you can find on the asset store. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, after you get the asset, is we're just going to download the asset in your package manager. and. We can basically, once it's done downloading, we can pretty much just import it. It's not that big of a file, I think it's around like a couple of megabytes, yeah, 1.9 megabytes. Um, quite a small file. But in it, you can pretty much see there's like an AK, which is basically going to be your Vandal. There's, um, I guess that could kind of, the M4 can also look like the Vandal. We got our Bucky, um, we got a Guardian, we've got an Ares, we've got um, a Frenzy, and this is obviously going to be the classic. And yeah, and so. That's pretty much, um, obviously this doesn't actually have like the exact same models as every single gun in Valorant, but for now, we're just going to use these models as stand-ins for Valorant's guns. So once you have imported the asset, what you can do is you can go into this folder in the assets folder, go into the prefabs, and we're going to start making our first gun, which is going to be the M1911. Um, now actually this, I'm just going to rename this really quickly to the classic. And actually, I'm just going to create a new folder here for all of our future prefabs. So we're just going to create a new folder and call it prefabs. So let's go back into this folder. And what we can do is we can just drag in our classic into our rigid body controller. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the controller in the hierarchy. And I'm actually going to unpack the prefab completely. Um, and then actually, I'm also going to drag out our game tab. And what you kind of want to do is you kind of want to create an empty here and call it, let's say, like, classic. And then you want to drag our classic that we dragged into the scene under this empty object. And then what you want to do is you want to adjust this classic object. Oops. And you just kind of want to move it in front of your camera and rotate it around. Oh, oops. Um, let me just drag this here. Actually, I'm just going to zero, so it's zeroed out. So you don't want to move, sorry, you don't want to move this class, the empty, you want to move the model of the classic. And also we should unpack the prefab as well. But basically, just drag it around and drag it to where you want the gun to be. Um, I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to rotate this by 180 degrees on the y-axis so that it's pointing the right way. And this will pretty, whoops, this will pretty much be our classic. And I'm actually just going to also make this like a bit bigger, so like 1.5 by 1.5 by 1.5. And you can see it's kind of clipping off here. So how we can fix the clipping is we can go into our camera and we can change our clipping planes to zero and it'll automatically set to lowest possible um, value, which is 0 0.01. And what clipping planes basically does is that it clips your, um, the, like what you can see, um, which is why the gun was kind of being cut off. But now if we press play actually, um, you can see here that we actually have a gun that is following our player. But what you will notice is that even though our gun is actually following our player, um, it is not shooting. It is not actually doing anything. And also, you can see that when we rotate our ca um, camera around, we our gun doesn't actually follow our um, camera. So what we can do is we can actually just drag the classic under the main camera instead of our um, rigid body only. And this way, all of our rotations will be reflected onto the gun as well. Um, yeah, so cool. So I'm actually also just going to turn up the directional light to like 1.5 um, because I feel like it's getting a bit hard to see. Um, and also, I'm just going to make this light have no rotation. Oops. Actually, I guess not no rotation, but 90 degrees rotation. And I guess we can make this one now. 
um, because the shadows were kind of bothering me a bit. Um, yeah, so now there should be no shadows. Um, yeah, so basically, um, we have our gun now. So, but if, yeah, again, if you notice that if we left click, there's really nothing that is happening. So, to fix this, what we can do is we can go and create a new script. And what we're gonna call this is we're gonna call this our um, gun script. And now we can enter the gun script. And actually, let's also do some housekeeping. And um, before we actually make the gun script, let's actually also go into our oops, uh, go back into Unity, and we can create a new folder, and we can call this scripts. This way, all of our scripts are nice and tidy. Um, and I'm just gonna drag the gun script in here. Oops, there we go. The script is open. Okay. Um, and then. Once I drag it in, I'm just going to enter the gun script. So what we're going to do in here is nothing too complicated. Uh, we're going to have essentially a, pup, a game object that's going to store our bullet um, that we're going to be instantiating. Now, there are, when you're making an FPS in Unity, usually there are two different ways you can go about it. You can either make a physical bullet or you can use ray casting. Um, and for this tutorial, I feel that having a physical bullet will work better than ray casting. Um, and the reason is, uh, I feel like it'll give a better visual to the player, um, especially because of like bullet tracing in Valorant is like really, really like, you know, an important part of the game, especially when using the Vandal. So I feel like we should be using physical bullets instead of ray casting to give the player some visual. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna obviously create our um, game object that will store our bullet variable. We're going to create a float that is going to store our bullet speed and a public transform for our instantiate or exit position of our bullet. And what we're going to do is upon void up on void update, upon um, input dot get key down key code dot and we're going to create two different um, two different um, inputs here. So we're going to have two key code variables for left uh, for main fire and alt fire. Now, if you played Valorant before, you'll know that um, the classic can actually shoot both um, shoot both um, with the left mouse button and the right mouse button. Um, and the right mouse button kind of gives it an alt fire function that shoots three different bullets. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're actually going to have get key down and then we're gonna have um, min main fire for now. So we're just gonna be coding our, oops. we're just gonna be coding our, um, our left click simply. Um, and actually, we might not, we, we're not even going to get into alt firing in this episode. Um, we might get into it in the next episode. And the reason we're not going to get into alt firing in this episode is because it deals with something called bullet spread. Um, because if we instantiate simply three bullets and they all go in the same direction, um, you know, there's no point in firing three bullets. The reason that there is an alt fire is it kind of acts as a shotgun. Um, so in the next episode, we'll be like improving our shooting system so that there's like, you know, bullet spread um, and like inaccuracies. Um, but for today, we're just going to get our basic gun working. So we're just going to have if input that get key down main fire, then we're just going to instantiate our bullet at the bullet exit position with the bullet's original rotation. And then we're going to create a local variable called whatever you want. I'm just going to call it X. I'm gonna call and I'm gonna add a force. I'm gonna actually, sorry, I'm not going to add a force. I'm actually gonna first find the component dot get. Sorry, for some reason. Oh, there we go. Sorry, my bad. Exit position dot position. Um, we're gonna set x dot get component. I want to get the rigid body component from x, our newly instantiated instantiated game object, and we're gonna add a force to that. We're gonna add a force of. Um, transform dot forward multiplied by our bullet speed and yeah that's 
pretty much all we need to do. And actually, one more thing, we're just going to do uh, destroy, sorry, not delete. Um, we're going to destroy X after 5 seconds automatically if our bullet does not hit an object. This way we don't get clustered with too many game objects in our scene of just bullets going on forever and ever. Um, and yeah, so now what we can do is we can, we can create our um, bullet prefab. So what we're going to do is I'm going to right click in our scene and I'm going to create an empty sphere. And I'm actually going to set the size of the sphere to be 0.01 by 0.01 by 0.01 for now. And that's actually a bit too small. Um, let's make this like... Let's make it elongated on the x-axis, so let's make this like, oh sorry, not x, um, the z-axis, so I'm just going to make this like 0.1, and then the height can be 0.05 as well as 0.05 on the width, and I think that is kind of looking like a bullet, um, and yeah, so I'm just going to rename this to um, bullet prefab. And I'm going to go into our prefabs folder, I'm going to drag in our bullet prefab. But first, I'm going to actually add a rigid body component to it. We're going to disable the gravity on this. We're going to disable... Actually, no. We won't disable rotation for now. And we're just going to drag in our bullet prefab into our um, prefabs folder. And we can now safely delete this from the scene because it is saved as a prefab. So now what we can do is we can go into our classic and we can right click and create an actual... Actually, create an empty. And what this empty is going to act as is it's going to be kind of um, the transform that's going to store where the bullets are going to be exiting from the gun. So I'm just going to drag this here, drag this up. And this is essentially going to dictate where our bullets are going to be instantiated from. Um, so you want to make this as close to like inside um, the hole as possible. But don't make it inside the hole because you don't want our bullet actually touching our gun model. Um, actually, our model doesn't have a collider, so I'm pretty sure you, we can actually do that safely. And I'm just going to rename this to be um, Exit Position. Oops, Exit Position. Oh, apparently I can't spell. Exit Position, there we go. So, and I'm going to go into our classic and I'm going to attach our gun script to it. We're going to set main fire as left mouse button, which should be at the bottom. Um, right there. Mouse zero, there we go. Um, and yeah, so now we're just going to drag in our prefab for our bullet. Our exit position is obviously here, that thing that we just created. And I'm just going to set this bullet speed to be 500 for now. And now if we press play, should see that if we left click, our bullets are coming out of our gun, which is really cool. Um, but you'll notice that um, actually I'm going to set this bullet speed to be even faster than 500, maybe a thousand. Um, and but what's what, what's essentially happening is that you might realize that when you left click now, um, the bullets are kind of bouncing off. You can see. Um, oh, I'm just going to drag out the game tab so that you guys can see the bullet actually bouncing off the wall. Um, but if, we, if I shoot here, you can see that this bullet is just like floating against the wall and it kind of just fades through there. Um, and that's not good, we don't want that. Um, we want the bullet to disappear when it hits um, an object. So what's going to happen is, actually I'm also going to make this, these bullets actually just slightly bigger. I'm going to make these 0 0.12 by 0 point, 0 0.06 by 0 0.06 by 0 0.12. Um, and then I'm going to, we're going to create a new script. And this script is going to control bullet behavior. So we're going to call this the bullet behavior, behavior script. And essentially what the script is going to do is just, this is just going to be attached to the bullet prefab and this is just going to destroy, tell the bullet to destroy itself when it collides with an object. So what we can just say is void on collision enter destroy game objects. And yeah, that's pretty much all we really need to do for our bullet behavior script for now. And now if we enter this uh, prefab, we can attach our bullet behavior script um, right here. Um, and yeah, so now when we press play, um, you can see that our player will grab the gun and we'll be able to shoot 
and when the bullet collides with an object, it will hopefully destroy itself, which it is not doing. Um, um, okay, for some reason on collision enter is not working. Um, let's try to add like a print statement for the collisions. Uh, name so we can kind of just debug a bit collision dot game object dot name because um, I'm pretty sure that um, we should be currently um, having the bullet destroy itself when it hits an object but for some reason if you see here if I shoot at the wall it doesn't actually delete itself which is really strange oh that worked there and that also worked um, so why has this not been working? I think that might just be the speed of that our bullet is actually traveling up. Um, if I actually just go into our bullet and um, bullet, or oh, sorry, our gun script, and I, I change the speed to like let's say something like 100, um, what should happen is it's so slow that it will actually get detected by the um, barriers, um, but. I believe what was happening before was that um, the bullets were kind of not getting destroyed because they were going so fast they were actually phasing through the wall. Uh, but this isn't like that big of a problem. Um, we could fix this in the next episode. Um, and yeah, so I guess that's pretty much it for this episode. Uh, if we set it back to a thousand, you can see we actually have bullets that like travel quite fast. Um, and yeah, and they're traveling from our gun, um, they destroy themselves mostly when they hit, and if they don't destroy themselves when they hit an object, they destroy themselves after 5 seconds anyways. Um, so, and as well, um, yeah, we also pretty much just made our first gun in Valorant, um, save for our alt firing, which we will add in the next episode. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. In the next episode, again, we'll be making the alt fire for the classic which will introduce bullet spread. We'll add the bullet spread system onto our actual firing for our mouse zero button, um, and we'll fix the bug for our um, bullets facing through the walls when they're going too fast. And we will definitely also add maybe another gun, like um, a rifle or maybe the shorty. Um, and yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Um, thank you for watching this episode, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.